buildings have become a familiar sight around the nation's domestic airport, with many wondering when they would be completed. Well, two weeks ago, the Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria, FAN, announced they had called off the lease for this project, a hotel and conference center, following the failure of the concessionaire by Courtney Aviation Services Limited to complete it. According to FAN, by Courtney had 18 months to complete the project, and that completion date expired in 2008. But the authorities of Bicotney say they have a court order restraining Fan from taking over the lease. It's a tale of accusations and counter-accusations, and both sides have court documents to back their claims. Law Weekly will look at the legal issues in contention. But first, let's do a quick recap of the top stories from the courts. I'm Shala Shieli. We start with the report that a federal high court in Lagos during the week stopped the Nigerian Bar Association, NBA, from collecting the newly introduced practicing fee for lawyers in the country. Justice Rita Ophelia Jumogobia ordered the association to revert to the status quo pending the determination of the substantial suit filed by some lawyers. The plaintiffs in the suit, five of them, had filed the suit to challenge the upward review in the fees. They submit that these fees were rather too exorbitant for some lawyers who cannot afford same. It will be recalled that the National Executive Committee of the NBA had announced the new rate of practicing fees payable from 2013. The rates generated ripples among lawyers who said it was a 250% increment compared to the fees paid in past years. Staying at the Federal High Court Lagos, another judge, Justice Okechuko KK, last week, refused to grant an application by the Speaker of the Lagos State House of Assembly, Honorable Adeyemi Kufuriji, and his aide, Won Oyebode Ateyebi, seeking to terminate their trial. The judge, in his ruling, refrained from dismissing the 20 count money laundering charge on which the duo are being tried. The court held that it would be guided by public interest and instead ordered an accelerated hearing in the case. The speaker and his aide are standing trial for allegedly laundering funds belonging to the Lagos State House of Assembly. From Lagos, we move to Abuja, where the Federal High Court has vacated the warrant of arrest issued by the Senate against the sacked chairman of the Pension Reform Tax Team, Mr. Abdul Rashid Mena. Justice Adamu Bello, while delivering judgment on a suit filed by Mr. Mena, held that the arrest warrant did not comply with Section 88 of the 1999 Constitution as amended. The court also held that in failing to make available the official government gazette containing the process leading to the issuance of the arrest warrant, the Senate had no evidence to show that due process was followed. Justice Bello has therefore issued an order of perpetual injunction restraining the Senate and the Nigerian police from attempting to arrest Mr. Mena in relation to his failure to appear before the committee investigating the rot in the pension administration. And from South Africa comes the report that leader of the Niger Delta militant Henry Oka has been sentenced to 24 years in prison for his role in two separate bombings in Nigeria's federal capital territory, Abuja. Judge Niels Klassen, who handed out the sentence, held that the convict had not accepted responsibility for the crimes and had shown no remorse whatsoever. In reaching its decisions, the court noted that there were indeed compelling circumstances in support of mitigation of sentence, which includes the fact that Henry Oka, at 48, has no criminal record, has a family that depends on him, and that evidence has shown that he is influential enough to assist the Nigerian government in finding a solution to the problems in the Niger Delta. And we round off where we started. The Lagos High Court Ikeja has again granted permission to the chairman of By Courtney Limited, Dr. Wali Babalaki, to travel to South Africa on medical grounds. In granting this second application, Justice Adeni Yonigbanjo ordered the By Courtney boss to return to the country 72 hours before his next trial date. Dr. Wali Babalaki, his company By Courtney Limited, one Alex Oku and two other firms, Tabellini Visioni Limited and Renix Nigeria Limited, are facing charges of allegedly aiding convicted former Delta State Governor James Ibori to transfer 4.7 billion naira to Mauritius between May and December 2006. On the next adjourned date of May 7th, the court will rule on an application filed by By Courtney seeking to dismiss the charges against it. If the application succeeds, it will have the effect of terminating. 
the trial. You see, life has just got easier. You stay connected to Tennis TV, where news and innovations are shaping our world. Simply log on to ChannelsTV.com to get the breaking news. Browse the homepage according to what matters to you. Tap on the extended coverage of business, sports, politics, lifestyle, infotech, entertainment, health, world news, and lots more. Click on the live link and see the news in real time. Do you want to watch the latest video of the day? It's just a click away. Friend us on Facebook, YouTube, follow us on Twitter, Google+, Plus. participate in Channel TV poll, and share your comments. It's a website you can talk to. Your voice will be heard. ChannelsTV.com The news at your fingertips. Welcome back. Now to the very contentious issue brewing between FAN and Dr. Wally Babalakins by Courtney Aviation Services Limited. This building you see came out of the ruins of the former domestic terminal that was ravaged by fire in May 2000. It was after that inferno that the government of Chief Olusegun Obasanjo took the decision to redevelop the airport under a private partnership scheme. Enter Dr. Wali Babalaki and by Courtney Limited. <laughs> That commissioning was done in April 2007 and the Mutala Mohamed Airport 2 MMA2 in Lagos is the first build, operate and transfer project of its magnitude which was completed successfully by a Nigerian company. Some years down the line, trouble is now brewing between the operators of the MMA2 and the Federal Airport Aviation Authority, FAN. First is the issue of what period by Courtney will operate the MMA2 for. Is it 12 years or 36 years? There was and there is a subsisting agreement for 12 years. The operators or overlords of by Courtney have attempted over the years to extend that tenure from 12 years to 36 years using various flowers and uh, what the Nigerian terminology would say will we, we'll term as long leg to change the terms of the agreement from 12 years to 36 years and fan and of course, the federal government has consistently maintained that you cannot do that. You cannot change the goalpost in the middle of the game. And so the term of the contract remains 12 years. Judgment of March 3, 2009 of the Federal High Court states clearly that the tenure is 36 years. It is not ambiguous. It is not open to debate. It has been subjected to a lot of personal views of those who have never known the law seeking to interpret the law. The law has been interpreted by the courts. My personal views cannot override the court's views. And so no body's personal views in Nigeria can override the court's views. We signed a deal that gave us exclusivity over all domestic traffic. We signed it. Everybody signed it. We've not been given exclusivity for one day. We signed a deal which said that any terminal for local traffic in Lagos will be by Cotney's. We did not rely on our agreements alone. We went to court, and the court so decided. 
we've gone beyond the stage of personal interpretation. We've gone beyond the age of views. All we need to do is obey the court order. The second issue in contention between both parties is the ownership of the remodeled General Aviation Terminal, GAT, in Lagos. There was an arbitral proceedings which stated clearly that the GAT belonged to Bicotney. There was a court ruling in March 2009, I think at page 36, which stated very clearly that GAT belongs to Bicotney. After this court ruling, Ojemai Oldens, the landlords to Adiki Airlines, appealed. The appeal was dismissed. Fan appealed. The appeal was dismissed. The unions appealed. The appeal was dismissed. Ojemai Oldens then went to the Supreme Court to restrain the court from handing over the place to Bicotney, it was dismissed by the Supreme Court. Now, by all processes, we should be in control of the GAT. It has been handed over to us by arbitration, handed over to us by court, and has been certified by all the courts of the land. I did hear that Fan mentioned at a stage that there's an appeal to the Supreme Court. I am not aware. What I'm aware of is that Ojemai Holdings did appeal to the Supreme Court and sought an order restraining the handover, which was dismissed by the court. The mere fact you have appealed on an issue does not constitute a state of proceedings, does not constitute an injunction unless the court specifically grants you one. There is no injunction restraining us from taking over the GAT. When we heard that the GAT was being remodeled, we wrote to the institutions complaining about this, that it was a flagrant disregard of the court of law. We got no response. We went further and sought an injunction from the courts. It was granted to us. Fan went to court on this matter. On the hearing of the issue on notice, Fan's application to restrain our takeover from DAT was dismissed. I think the GAT is what typifies the lawlessness of the situation. I will only quote, with your permission, from a judgment of the court on the issue of the GAT. If I have your permission, I will get the judgment. I'm quoting from the court judgment at page 46. It says, in the case before the court, we have seen the gross, deliberate, calculated, and heinous abuse of the rule of law typified by the acts of the federal government of Nigeria, assisted by the minister charged with responsibilities for aviation matters. In one, in disobeying the judgment of the court delivered on 3rd March 2009, approximately three years and three months ago, to deliver the immediate possession of the GAT to the plaintiff as ordered by the court. And as if that was not enough, the federal government and its agents and agencies are presently engaged in remodeling and or construction works to improve the terminal contrary to the, and notwithstanding the agreement with applicants and the judgment of the Honorable Court. I have nothing to add. If the court says that your actions are heinous, gross abuse of power. What else do I want to add? The GAT and every other airport, besides the ones that are owned by state governments, are owned by the Federal Airports Authority of Nigeria and controlled 
by the Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria on behalf of Nigerians. An individual wants to take that over simply because he had connections with officials of government at that time who sat down in the convenience of their office and without reference to either FAN or the Ministry of, Justice, uh, of, of Aviation and uh, conducted the rape of the agreement. I am happy to tell you that we have the records that show that when the then Minister of Aviation proposed and gave the issues, or the, the, the proposal to amend the agreement from 12 years to 36 years, I'm happy to tell you that we have it on paper. The then President of the Federal Republic, Chief Olusegun Obasanjo, wrote with his hand in capital letters, no, and directed that that proposal should be presented to the Federal Executive Council. Till today, the then Minister of Aviation and any other person, nobody has presented, presented that proposal to the Federal Executive Council for, 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 for approval. So all these things are being done, and they were being done because Nigerians didn't know. And all those who are here, I will tell you that before some of us came here, anybody that attempted to face up and square up to, to, to this powerful uh, cabal was transferred out of office. We are aware that the then officers in the legal department that were challenging this crude uh, way of doing things were transferred. Some were transferred to Yola. Some were taken to Jalingo, some were taken to Sokoto. And then the, 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 the powerful the clique went ahead and signed the agreements on behalf of her. These things were being done with the connivance of those who were in authority somewhere at that time. And we are respecting them, that's why we are not yet mentioning names. But the records are very clear. Their names are there. They signed it, representing FAN, representing Federal Ministry of Aviation, without the mandate of the Federal Ministry of Aviation or FAN. And there are people of high standing in this country today. But as time will tell, we are not going to say much now because we're in court. We're challenging the capacity of those persons to have gone as far as representing FAN without a mandate from FAN. We are challenging why they did that, and we want to see how far that will go. That's why we are not going to divulge all the facts, all, 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 all the names, but the records are very clear. They signed. These are the buildings which form the last issue in contention. The proposed four-star hotel and the conference center located around the MMA2, with Fan terminating the lease by Courtney's alleging a complete disregard of the rule of law. The lease agreement for the hotel and conference center has been terminated. In fact, it was terminated since last year or the year before last, with a valid notice of termination issued in line with the uh, contents of the agreement. So there was, uh, it was just in line, in tandem with the letter uh, of the agreement. Why did you have to issue that press release again? Yeah, so that we take physical position and, in the, and ensure we are in, in control of our property uh, so that nobody continues to be misled, Nigerians, particularly the innocent readers of publications and uh, newspapers particularly will continue to be deceived by a global business mogul who believes in shortchanging the larger society just for its uh, pecuniary interest. We do not intend to allow Nigerians to continue to wallow in ignorance. That was why we needed to inform the general public that this carcasses of structures that are very ugly uh, will no longer stand and uh, deface 
the airport environment of Nigeria? We were developing the projects. We were following all rules and regulations. Certain condition precedents ought to be fulfilled and we made application for their fulfillment. When we noticed that there was no response, we protected ourselves by going to court to seek an interim order pending arbitration. Now, the agreement clearly states that disputes should be referred to arbitration. So as corporate citizens, as good citizens of Nigeria, we have referred the issue to arbitration and we expect that all parties will participate in the arbitration and abide by its consequences. So when FAM announces that it has terminated the project, we do not see it as a statement of heading by Courtney. We see it as an assault against the federal government of Nigeria and one of its most important aspects, the judiciary. When there is a clear court order saying, I restrain you from taking any step until you resolve an arbitration, and you proceed to take a step, you proceed to make an announcement, you proceed to broadcast it even on channels, you've not offended by Courtney, you've only ridiculed yourself before the whole world as an institution that is not prone to obedience of the law. Both sides are still in court over some of these issues. But who exactly does the law favor? This is one public interest case that the Nigerian judiciary needs to give an accelerated hearing and make definite pronouncements in the interest of both parties and the Nigerian citizens. We start from the beginning. The mixture of colors and the brush strokes. The chiseled wonders that link art and science. The steps in each performance. The highs and the lows of emotion. The world of words, rhymes, and rhythms. But this is not a political power. It's a revolution. It's the evolution of a people refusing to suffer as far as the war. On every page, all the elements of a good read. Where else can you get it? Art House. Life is art. That's the program this week. We'll stay on top of this developing story and give you the details as they unfold. Please feel free to send in your comments via Facebook, email or Twitter. I'm Shola Shieli.